Welcome to another episode of the Pay, Play, Profit podcast. I'm your host, Jessica May, with co-host Marilyn Parham. And Marilyn, we're going to talk about how ways we can help our kids build wealth and start early, which I so wish I knew how to do when I was like younger. What do you think about today's topic? It's what everybody should listen to what you just said, so they'll pay attention to. <laughs> exactly. If you've got kids, grandkids, whatever, going to have kids in the future, nieces, nephews, whatever, let's help our youth understand money and how to make money work for them. Here we go. All right. I feel a bit impassioned about today's podcast, Marilyn, because I feel like there's been a lot of changes in the financial landscape over the years. And I don't even know when I was younger if this opportunity even existed, to be perfectly honest with you. But financial literacy has definitely been something I have personally struggled with and had to struggle with uh, with money. And I'm kind of in that season of my life where I'm trying to break some chains and been working really hard around breaking chains for the generations that come after me and starting with my kids. And I didn't even know this when my kids were younger because I was still growing up too around knowing what I should know. And I know you and I have very different backgrounds when it comes to money, understanding money and kind of how we utilize this great tool that we have which is money. And I love our business because now we get the opportunity to help people reimagine entrepreneurial success. And I love the idea of us helping us help those people help their kids or any other kids they might know. (laughs) I don't know. I just get so excited and I can't wait to talk about today's topic. I love this topic because it it feeds right into sort of my passion of financial literacy, which um, I was blessed to have parents that kind of taught me growing up early. But I think I think everybody will benefit from this conversation, whether whether you have kids or not. So, yeah, and I think it's that investment mindset and letting things grow. And I think, you know, savers have a natural bent to like fostering this and things like that. And spenders tend to not. I think we've got to recognize that sometimes we're coming from a seat of survival or just you didn't plain know. So. I hope and pray that no one listening to today's podcast uses this as a stick to measure themselves or others by, or it Mm -hmm. creates any kind of shame, guilt, or blame because it shouldn't do that either. No. What it should do is hopefully give you encouragement and inspiration that no matter the age, but particularly for the younger generation, we can make a big difference in their life based on this information. So let's dive Mm -hmm. into it. Yeah. How to help kids build wealth through IRAs. IRA is an acronym for Individual Retirement Account. And this could be the first time you've heard that acronym and heard that name. And basically, it's just a vehicle to help you save for retirement. And we really all should be saving for retirement um, and making sure we have a way to take care of ourselves. And this is one of the vehicles you can use that can also create some benefit to help you keep more of the money you earn including the money that your children earn. Mm -hmm. And if you're a small business owner, hopefully at some point you figure out ways to get your kids involved in your business if it makes sense to do so, because there's a lot of huge benefits to that. And then they can benefit from being able to contribute to an individual retirement account based on their earned income. So that's the first thing I think we need to make sure people understand about whether how how do kids get to participate in what looks like a big boy and girl kind of activity. I love which, it. Which is them earning money, right? That's that's, that's right. basically it. They have to have earned income. So there there can't be any gifts. Like you can't contribute no. to an IRA for a for a child through gifting or anything else. This isn't like a section 529 or some kind of investment account that you're gifting money into. Um, that's one of the criteria your children at whatever age that might be have to earn money as either 1099 income or W-2 income. Right. Is there any other qualifications or anything, Marilyn? No, not that I'm aware of. That's it. Mm -hmm. Um, The other thing that you need to know is that there is a limit and that limit changes every year, but they can contribute up to 100% of their earned income to a maximum of $6,000 in 2021 and 2022. 
Right. So it's not like just some open card. If they went out and made rolled 50 K this year, they can't put 50 K into an IRA. Right. Yeah. Not at but all. If they only made earned, I'm going to say earned a thousand dollars, they could put the whole thousand okay. dollars. Right. And if they only earned 6,000, they could put the whole 6,000, but no more. And so kind of the idea is the standard deduction at this point with the conversation is I think $12,500. Right. So, you know, you, anyone can earn up to $12,500 and not be taxed federally. Is that right. correct, Marilyn? Right. And so let's say your kid had the opportunity to earn $12,500, which isn't hard to do if you're an older kid, especially working 20, 30 hours a week mm -hmm. in a restaurant or, or in the family business or whatever, they could earn that money federally tax-free, and then they could contribute literally up to $6,000 into an individual retirement account. That's correct. And that's it. And they have to have that funded either by 1231 of the tax year that they're in or before they file their tax return in the next year. Is that correct? Right. And how do you set up an individual retirement account, guys? Like there's a lot of vehicles for you to do that. If you already have a financial planner or advisor, uh, that's a good place to start. If you have a bank or a banking relationship, that's a good place to start. And then the question is Roth or traditional IRA? And which would you say, Marilyn? Well, especially for your kids, it would be the Roth, probably hands down. They're just young enough. They have the time for that money to grow. And it's the that growth is, is tax free. So that's yeah. a huge benefit. And that is really the benefit, guys. So basically, they're paying tax or not, frankly, because they get up to $12,550 federally tax free, but they're being taxed on the money that they're earning now. They get to contribute to their Roth IRA post tax. And that money gets to grow federally tax-free. And when they pull it out, they don't pay tax on it. That's correct. You know, so they're getting to make money tax-free. So imagine, you know, and when you earn $50,000 when you're 20, that's being taxed <laughs> at a mm -hmm. high rate, you, you know, with the way tax rates are going, plus it's above the 12,000 standard deduction and what have you. And this, I know we're spending just a minute here, but this is the part of money that sometimes doesn't make sense to people. Like they don't really like, I know I didn't. I mm -hmm. know I never, the, the lot never like caught for me of like the, va the compounding money. Oh, it's huge. Yes. And until you see it on paper, it's kind of hard to really grasp it, mm -hmm. but it's huge. And until you've had the burden and the, the burden and the pleasure of being a citizen who pays taxes, because I think it is a burden and a pleasure to a certain mm -hmm. extent, because, you know, we do uh, have taxes to pay. I, I really appreciate now since I'm, you know, pushing towards 50, especially that I can grow money and not be taxed on the future earnings and growth of that money. Um, right. Because the Roth is available for adults, but there are income thresholds. And unless your kid is just like, I don't know, the richest kid on the planet, they're not going to hit those income restrictions. So you don't have to really worry about that. And say it's less than 1% of all the kids out there. So yeah. If that, <laughs> if that, right? So the Roth IRA is definitely the vehicle. They're not, they're well within the income restrictions to qualify for that. And it's getting to grow tax-free and they only pay tax on the year they earn the money. And if they didn't go over the standard deduction, they don't have federal tax. So right. that's pretty cool. And if you're mm -hmm. paying your kids through your business, you get like a lot of benefits for that too, because it becomes deductions for the business and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. really neat stuff that you should definitely be talking to your tax pros about and how to make sure you're taking advantage of this vehicle and using it as a tool to help your children understand money and prepare for their retirement before they even begin to even think about that. I, I was not thinking about retirement at 16. <laughs> and no, now I no wish kids, I was. Now not I wish many I was. kids are. <laughs> and, you know, my parents have been great, but I, they weren't pushing retirement on me either. And if they had, have, I wouldn't have listened. So mm -hmm. I knew better, you know, I mm -hmm. knew more. Okay, now that we've kind of got the basics of that and we've exposed our audience to this and maybe they've heard of it or maybe they go deeper now as a result of this conversation, let's talk about some of that compounding math. Like, I think that's very exciting 
to kind of understand if I earn money and I put this much money aside, I've always been like really surprised when you do this exercise with me, Marilyn, that a little goes a long way. Absolutely. So like, I think we have a few scenarios we can walk through Mm -hmm. too. And it's basically talking about that teenager, essentially. Mm -hmm. But I do want to, I do want to reiterate that if your child earns money, your child can do a Roth IRA. Okay. And there are a lot of younger children (laughs) who are even crawling around that are making some money, right? You see those Huggies commercials and stuff like that. There's no age. There's absolutely no age restriction here. Babies are getting their feet in commercials and their hands in commercials. Like there's all Mm -hmm. kinds of ways to make money at every age. But let's just talk about the more common, like the middle school, high school or situation or whatever. And let's talk, talk about a 15 year old. So your 15 year olds working at the grocery store or working in the family business. Let's talk about what if that 15 year old decided to contribute just a thousand dollars at the end of that each year for four years. And now I've, I've talked to young people about this, you know, contributing to retirement. And a lot of times, like you said, they're like, eh thousand dollars what difference does that make mm-hmm. right so I, I want to use that to pay for some shoes or something mm-hmm. but if that 15 year old contributes thousand dollars to a Roth IRA at the end of each year for just four years so that's at that's the it. end of for the 15 at the end of 16 at the end of 17 at the end they've made at the end of by the by the time they reach their fourth year and they're 17 years of age, they've put $4,000 into a Roth, right? That's right. $4,000. $4,000. If we assume that you get 5% uh, annual return rate on this, which is is pretty reasonable, Mm -hmm. that Roth IRA account would be worth $33,000 in 45 years. So by the time that- $44,000. Yeah, $33,000 in, uh, by the time- they are 60 years old. So that's in 45 years. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's a pretty good, that's 1,000, well, 4,000, because you've done it for four years to 33,000 just by letting it sit there. Yeah. That's just one way they built retirement by off $4,000. The money mm-hmm. made money, basically. Right. And they never had to pay tax on the difference between four and $33,000. No, they don't. So they and, basically uh, they got to earn $29,000 over 45 years tax-free. Yeah. And they just put that money there after four years, they quit retire, quit uh, contributing, right? Four years. Yep, and that's at it. 60, they're like, okay, I'm going to take $33,000. And I only, I didn't pay tax on any of this. Yay. Now, here's the interesting part. And this is where interest rates are so powerful. Mm-hmm. So that was at 5%, which is, is pretty reasonable. But say you actually get an 8% return. Now, you know, that's upwards of, you know, over 45 years, but that's doable too. And, and especially when you have good, good markets, that same money would be worth $104,000. Whoa, just a 2% change in like an, a, an assumed rate of return. Yeah, 3%. And some, some years are going to be higher and some years mm-hmm. are going to be lower. So it's kind of like right. over the 45 years, what did that look like? But I mean, basically, you earned a hundred thousand dollars tax free through patience. Yes, just patience, just putting it away and letting it be. And I mean, I can tell you right now. I mean, so four thousand dollars over forty eight months is how much dollars? How much? What is that? I should be able to do this math in my head, but a thousand dollars is less than them. How much is money? Is that a month a year? Um, like eight hundred bucks. Not eight hundred bucks. Eighty three dollars. Yeah, eighty three dollars a month. So for eighty three dollars a month, for forty eight months, the child could potentially have earned anywhere between twenty nine and a hundred thousand dollars tax free. That's correct. By the time they were sixty, which is still very young, by the way. Yeah. Extremely young. I just love that math. And I just wish this meant something to me when it could have made a huge difference, right? And right. but now. You and I had always had this conversation. I'm like, someday, Marilyn, savings is going to turn to something sexy for me. Mm-hmm. And I would say, not this season, not this season. And within the last two years, that's happened. Right. But now I've had to fight for that, you know, fight to want that, fight to care about that. And I think the spender's plot is like, that's always their journey, especially if they've got trauma with money 
or they've got generational issues with money or they have illiteracy around money or whatever. And I love that we're getting to talk about this right now and that we get to help change a family's future and the future of our youth by having this conversation and breaking it down to it's an $83 a month decision. When you're earning money anyway. When you're earning money anyway. Okay, well, let's do another scenario because I love compounding math. Oh, yeah, me too. I geek out on it. Now, so that scenario that same, was a thousand. What's another scenario? Yeah. So if that same uh, child contributes instead of a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars mm-hmm. for that, four, that same four years. So it's the same scenario, just instead of a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Then in 45 years at five percent, they have forty nine thousand dollars. Which is and different than the thirty three. Yeah. It's it's a uh, significantly higher than the thirty three, mm-hmm. and that's just five hundred dollars more a year. And then um, at the eight percent, it's one hundred fifty five thousand dollars. And all because you decided instead of eighty three dollars a month, you were going to do one hundred and twenty five dollars a month. Yeah, you decided to just give another forty two dollars to potentially earn anywhere between. Ten to fifty thousand dollars in additional tax-free money. Yeah, and 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 the math work. It's fifty percent more uh, on both sides. So, I mean, really. Well, let's get let's go really crazy then. Let's go really okay. crazy and say that same child at fifteen decides to do twenty five hundred dollars a year, which would basically be. $208 a month at the end of four years. What does that look like? At 5%, mm-hmm. it's $82,000 in 45 years. And at 8%, it's 259000 in 45 years. So $82,000 based off an investment of $10,000 mm-hmm. or essentially $208 a month. Mm-hmm. And then the math goes upward from there. Like imagine a kid that maxed it out every year and imagine a kid that started earning money when they were 10. Yeah. You know, totally. And $6,000 a year would essentially be them allocating $500 a month. Now your kid's going to have to earn. They're either going to contribute ideally a hundred percent of what they make potentially, or they're just really focused on saving in the very short term. And they're doing it basically because they're getting guidance and leadership from those who love them, that we need to do this. You know, we need to prioritize this. Absolutely. But if you, but I, I, I always go back to what you said earlier, like there's no amount of money too small to do this. Nope. So even mm-hmm. if it's not a thousand dollars a year, it could be a hundred dollars a year or $500 mm-hmm. a year. Like, there's no reason not to do something, but and listen, and when your kids get older though, you can't make them like I've, I've got, I've got younger mm-hmm. children right now. I talk to them about this constantly. None of them just being <laughs> truthful have went and set up their accounts, even though I'm kind of like, you need to do this. You know, I, at some point when your kids get to that age, you just can't force them to do things. I've got a mm-hmm. near 17 year old, a 21 year old and a 23 year old. So but I'm, I'm glad that I'm at least talking about it and having the mm-hmm. conversation because one day it might click and they'll go do that. Now, I will say that my kids save more than I ever did when I, I was their age because I have these conversations now. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> but but I would I would encourage, you know, put this information in front of your kids. If they see those numbers, they're going to be more it's hard likely to ignore to Mm-hmm. And it inspires me at the age of 45 to be more aggressive with my own retirement and to focus on this. And again, that's a mindset shift and it requires um, education and mindset. It takes all those parts to make these kinds of profit decisions. But this has a real impact on the youth. And if you are a small business owner with children, putting your kids to work in the business is a great way to do this and then start helping them navigate these decisions because you you have like kind of a different kind of influence when your kids start working with you and your businesses, right? Yeah, we do. And and I want to just speak to those about the no amounts too small because this scenario we talked about was just for four years and then mm-hmm. not ever again, okay? So if you're just making a habit out of, of doing something, anything, it's going to have those same results. Also, there was a, it's, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but there was a 
chart that I saw one time that if a person started when they're like 16 Mm -hmm. and contributed for, I think it was 10 years and stopped for the rest of their life and compared that to someone who started when they were 26 and contributed for the rest of their life. So that would be 40 years. The person that started earlier had more money. That blows my mind. I know. And I have the visual of that chart in my head because I've seen that chart because you've shown me that chart. Mm-hmm. And again, all you want to do as an adult is look back. Hindsight's 2020, right? And be like, oh, I yeah. wish I'd have listened or I wish I knew this or I wish I'd have paid attention. And then it's almost like you become a crusader and those people don't listen. <laughs> Like I didn't do it. I mean, yeah. not really. Yeah. Until I was a, you know, out of college and into my first job. So yeah. but these numbers are huge. And you know, then there's this thing. You know, I think. I, I mean, just again, being vulnerable here, you think, well, it, it's just so small, and these issues are bigger. So I'm just not going to deal with this right now. And time is your friend when it comes to money. Mm-hmm. It just is. Right. And money is going to money. I said this one time in a and a that we had with one of our clients community that money likes to be controlled. And that's mm-hmm. the absolute truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. When it's controlled and it's in particular, if it's being controlled, you know, in a way that it's being stewarded, when it's just left to its own accord, it's never going to quite do what it's supposed to do for you as a tool. Mm-hmm. It's going to be kind of a measure of something else your worth or your success or whether you're behind or on track or whatever money money can be like a really big way to self-sabotage or feel less than and we've got to put money back on the right side of the table and we need to stay on the strong side of the table and when our kids don't know enough yet because they haven't lived enough we've got to fight Mm -hmm. for that for them too right I love that. Hopefully without alienating them or mm-hmm. making them think we're just being a harp. And mm-hmm. and I do, I also have to tell you that it makes you, when you want to lead by example, not a, by exception, you know, because I want so much for my kids and because I'm learning so much through this business and the work with our clients and changing as I grow and get older and recognizing these growth opportunities, like there's no better tool for accountability either because I really take it to heart when what I do is not what I say. And so mm-hmm. it, it it helps hold my feet to the fire too, to talk about things like this with my kids and to talk about these things with our clients or to be brave enough to have a podcast like this instead of just throwing IRA stats at you and then talking about the reality of money and how hard it is to do something that's so powerful. Mm-hmm. Like this is so simple, practical and powerful, but it's it like, it's very hard to do sometimes yeah. to get started, to go open yeah. the account, to put the hundred dollars in instead of going and buying something else. Like yeah. there is a real harsh reality to being obedient mm-hmm. and no, leveraging money. Yeah. And really, and, you know, it, it's reward when you are obedient. I, yeah. I, I just really, truly believe that. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about one more thing related to why Roth is so ideal as well. Like we're not going to dive into the traditional piece because we're just on the Roth track here. It's a great tool. And I just also want to clarify for 2022, that federal deduction for earning money is 12,950 this year, where it was 12,550 last year. But withdrawals there are some withdrawal opportunities now obviously Marilyn I think you've made a great case for leave your money alone and try not to withdraw money that you've saved up because you're going to reduce the impact of your compounding Mm -hmm. uh, when you make these withdrawals but I think it's so nice that you do when you're under the age of 59 years of old and you've been using a vehicle like a Roth IRA, hopefully from the day you started earning money or within, you know, a couple of years of earning money when you're, you were just a wee bit. There are some ways you can actually get access to that money, which is, and I think that this, this is actually pretty cool. But obviously the, the ideal thing is you just wouldn't touch the money. But if you needed to, what are the ways that people could actually access this money before the age of 59? Yeah, and uh, I, I do or think 59 this is and a half, I think. 59 so. and a half. And I do think yeah. this is good. To, it, it sort of 
relieve some anxiety because you do know that you can mm-hmm. if you need to for these circumstances. So you can use the withdrawal for uh, to pay for a first time home purchase up to $10,000. You can't withdraw more than $10,000 for lifetime maximum. OK, you can withdraw for qualified education expenses. So college, you can withdraw for qualified expenses related to a birth or an adoption. There's a couple other ones. The other one is you can use it for unreimbursed medical expenses or health insurance if you are unemployed. Mm-hmm. I think that's a big one. Of course, if you become disabled, you can withdraw without penalty. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you if you happen to the owner of the account pass away, it can be withdrawn without any penalty either. I really think the first time home purchase and the ten thousand yeah. dollar lifetime max of that's pretty cool. And obviously, if you have the difference between taking out a student loan and paying someone else interest versus earning more money on your money, that obviously would be a probably a Huge. smarter play to mm-hmm. save yourself money by not overpaying an interest on student loans and things like that. And just when you're in a hardship, you know, and you know, that's the thing about 401ks, you can take money out of those if the conditions have been established for those but typically they're loans or or hardship withdrawals. And there's a lot of penalty and things like that that come with that or Mm -hmm. repayment that has to happen. So that's pretty cool. Now, if you've been in the Ross more than five years, are there anything that you can, is there anything that you can do in addition to that? Or is it pretty much the same thing? It is pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it is important to understand, you know, the age limitations and, the way you contribute and paying attention to all the restrictions, you know, don't just get a cursory understanding on a 20, 30 minute podcast and then go run with scissors here, team peeps, get the advice of a financial planner, engage that planner and you with your tax pro or accountant and just stay engaged, stay fully informed. Don't abdicate your responsibility to, again, your money likes to be controlled. (laughs) So that's important. I will interject the only difference between withdrawing before the five years and after the five years Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, before that time frame is if you withdraw it before the account's five years old, then they will tax Mm -hmm. the money. Yeah. So that is the the one caveat to that. Yeah. So if you need to access that before the five years is up, hopefully wait or maybe your issues hopefully don't happen until after the five year clock. That's correct. Hopefully. So you're not like getting additional money that you're going to have to pay to access that cash, but you can access it. And it's important Mm -hmm. to understand what those look like. Now, this is about kids and helping kids build wealth through a Roth IRA of sorts, but Roth IRAs are not just for the kiddos. They are for the adults too, but there are pretty um, standard straight line income restrictions. Um, It was designed to help the lower income earners build retirement and wealth faster for themselves. So if you are, uh, uh, if you have not done anything like this in a vehicle and you don't know more about it for yourself, I'd just like to challenge you to ask for you too, you know, because maybe you're going to go set up yours and one for your kids while you're at it and do it together, you know. If you're, if you're 30, if you're 40, even if you're 50, there's still time for them to make that money work for you. Yeah, Absolutely. I've loved today's conversation. Marilyn, anything else you'd like to leave our dear listeners with? No, once again, I'll just say a little is enough. So even if you have to start small. Yeah, a little is enough. It goes a long way. Money likes to be controlled. And time is definitely going to reward you when it comes to money and the compounding of money. And it's you're never too old to learn Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And uh I think that I love today's conversation. I love Me too. how to create change and reimagine how those trees start to look in the future for sure. So with that being said, that's a wrap. And I want to thank everyone for listening to another episode of the Pay Play Profit Podcast. Thanks for joining us today. Now, before we go, and especially with this episode, it's sharing is caring time. And this should be like a conversation at the dinner table on a walk, whatever. So we want you to join us each week. So if you haven't already hit subscribe for this podcast, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you listen, please do so now. Consider leaving a five-star review and share, share, share this episode. 
with anyone who has children or influence with with the townies, if you will, to start thinking about, especially if they're earning income, because that's the indicator piece. They need Mm -hmm. to be earning income, and the sooner they start, the better things will be. And until next week, join us, but be kind to yourself and to each other. All right, guys, this is Jessica May and Marilyn signing off, y'all. Bye.